does it. He does it again. <laughs> It's Every the, single it's, time. Broadcast bomb. It's getting to be a thing. <laughs> With that, we say good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Fellowship of the Geeks live broadcast for March 19th, 2013. My name is Thomas Chick, and joining us via Google Hangout is Mike Marlowe. Whee! We're hanging out. <laughs> And Les Webster. Good evening. And we may be joined by James Pickering from the website uh, galaxycalledallas.com later on this evening, hopefully. So how's everybody doing? We ding. So doing okay ding. here. That was the chat room. Mm. That was the chat room. What the you doing all right, Mikey? I'm peachy. Cool. Hope everybody's had a good couple of weeks. Um, yeah, it has been two weeks. I don't, okay. Just want to make sure because I know we've had some problems recently of being uh, not together. Yeah, not together. So separated, one might say, or not together. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple of things we want to talk to tonight. Um, one thing I want to uh, kind of go over, we, we want to kind of review our experience at uh, AllCon, which happened, I guess it's now almost a week and a half ago. Uh, it was my first time. Les had been uh, one just one time prior? I think one time. It was years ago, and... Uh there was only one person I went to see anyway, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then kind of go over some something a major point in our existence that's about to happen this this weekend. But first thing we want to go off on um, last week, <coughs> and I'm hearing I'm hearing myself repeated here. I don't know what's going on there, but. Um, the website Bleeding Cool, who's, which uh, if you've if you experienced the website, you know it not only does it do news, but it does it posts a lot of uh, rumors or, or or information that they get that has not been has not been released or, or you know that that kind of stuff. Well, last week, uh, they were, they had heard it got information that's been kind of developing over time that uh, uh, DC is planning to over the course of the guess, next few months cancel sixteen monthly books and proceed to do four weekly titles and have them from each. Of the main families, fam books of family books. I mean, Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, and Just League of Just League titles. Um, now they did go in and, and say, you know, they kind of put a little caution there, saying, hey, you know, this may not be, you know. You know, they weren't going to go out and say this is actually going to be done. They were just saying, "Hey, you know, just take it for what it is." But this, this is what I've been hearing, that kind of stuff. And you know, it. After I read that, I was, I, you know, I'm thinking there's sort of truth to it because um, a week ago. Okay. A week ago. <laughs> is this thing on? <laughs> a week ago. Yeah, yes, everybody saw that too. Yes. A week ago. A week ago. Yes. Um, a week ago, DC released their solicits for the month of June. There was only 50 titles solicited, not 52. Ones were missing. 
Mr. Smarty Pants. Well, they had, they the the previous month they had canceled they had ended six titles. So, and they started at four in June. So there's only fifty bucks in June. So are they in the process of doing this now? I don't know. So what do y'all guys think of this idea? If this is true, that they're going to start doing week four weekly titles. If I may, the four weekly titles I can see as a doable, yet it's going to have to probably have to string continuity with the the members of the four families that are going to be posted in those weeklies. Uh, if in the Batman family book, you've got to make sure there's continuity so they're not having to do ultimately another crisis to wipe out things and start anew. Are you kidding? They're already having to do that now. <clears throat> well, I mean, we're not even two years into this, and they've already they've already gone back and and either contradicted themselves and have gone back and tried to clear some of that stuff out, or yeah, you know. Anyway, go ahead. Well. Uh, I think this harkens back to when you and I discussed before about uh, anthologies. And instead of doing 52 books, do uh, 30 or 40 and do the others as anthologies, which is what's going to happen with this weekly business. You're going to have two or three stories per book, just like they did with action back in the 90s. Yep. Uh, the, the Action Weekly was a good read. The only problem was it was still expensive, and that's what's going to happen here. I think an anthology, though, would be the way to go on this. And instead of shutting down those additional books, let's start doing them as anthologies and do it every two months or every three months. You know, four times a year is enough for some of the titles. And you can get a good story. Well, and am I smoking a little crack here, or do I remember reading somewhere that they're going to have, since they're going to be doing weekly books for each of these families, they're going to have multiple creative teams. Yes, there will be multiple creative teams. So that's why you're not still doing other books, is because all your create you're just you're dumping all your creative teams onto the same title. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but but this is giving you a chance to bring other creative teams in too. You're going to be able to have uh, Bendis, we'll say Bendis and and uh, Romero doing a book. You know, you never know who is going to be doing the the weeklies because their stories are going to probably run four weeks to get a story, and then some. You know, they they toss somebody else in there, just like they did Action Comics years ago. That that was a good anthology because or and showcase the same thing in the in the. Uh, what was it, Showcase 99 or something like that, where, where they did three or four stories uh, in each book and kind of set it that way. I, I see what you're going, but the, but the thing is, is they have already tried an anthology book. It was called DC Universe Presents, and that was one of the first books canceled, or the second group of books canceled. So what's so what's gonna what's gonna ha what they're gonna probably do is yeah there will be a book there's gonna be a weekly book in the Batman families and it'll probably start Batman and then have a couple of other like you said a couple of backup titles where it's Red Robin or if they cancel one of the other books like a, a like Talon or more than likely Batwing was Batwing's surpri I'm surprised Batwing still survived but it's it's about to go through a major change, so that's that's the first sign that they're about ready to cancel that one. So, but but 
you know, the lead story is going to be one of the big guys, whether it's Superman, Batman, or whatever they're going to do for the Justice Justice title. But and then backups will be Other and friends, characters. yeah. Right. The, the sidekicks. And no. That. And and the other thing that they're probably going to end up doing is they're still going to bundle these things. But this way they can do it by creative team and just take that side story and bundle it if they want to. If, if it got a good reaction on social media or something, yeah. the whatever, the Nightwing, four pages. We're losing for <laughs> weeks or whatever, and they can, they can bundle that sucker by itself as a, as a trade and, and stick it out there and, and, and expect it to sell. I'm sure you had a hell of a point, but you froze there for a second, so I'm not sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, ah. oh yeah, capture, recapture that lightning in the bottle. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. No, no, I, I'm just saying they, that it, it'll be relatively easy for them to anthologize by creative team if they've got a, a decent sort of side story going over the course of two or three months, they can pull that out and sell it as a one-shot or even as a trade paperback Yeah, with a reasonable expectation of selling some books. Um, right now no, excuse me. Right now, they've got Threshold as one of their titles. And that, to me, is more of a, an anthology than DC Presents. Because, yes, DC Presents carried a character for four issues and gave you a story. Uh, to me, an anthology is going to have different stories in one publication, in one book. And that's that's where I see the big difference here. Don't split hairs with me. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. You know what I mean, damn it. No, no, I know what you mean, but no, but I I understand what you're saying, and I'm and I'm not trying to be difficult about it. I'm just saying that uh, uh, I I think they can do an anthology and be successful with it. I'm hoping that threshold is that the start for them. I don't know that Marvel has an anthology right now. I don't think they have a single anthology in their library. No, they don't, but they have they have several titles that they do at least twice a month. Well, in 52, both versions have been big sellers for DC, so I can sort of see why they're wanting to go this direction. Well, and I understand that. I understand that. And 52 was a successful series, but it was a set time. I mean, there were 52 issues, and then that was it. This is supposed this is didn't they? Huh? People came back and bought the second round. Mm hmm So obviously there's they feel that there's a market for a weekly series. They wouldn't do it if there wasn't gonna be money in it. I mean, come on. Let's be realistic here. Mm hmm The problem I had though with fifty two and countdown was the spin offs. Trying to track those down was next to impossible. And that's going to be harder to do in this type of situation, too. You're not going to yeah. have as many spinoffs. Or if you do, people are just going to ignore them because it's too much of a pain in the ass. Pardon my French. No, that's true. Now, Marvel did AVX, but one of those titles was nothing but fight scenes. And that went for six. The, the, the whole thing went for six months. Well, and Avengers versus X Men was every two weeks too. So yeah. you had you had Avengers versus X Men, then you had AVX. Yeah. So basically, it was coming out weekly for six months. If you put the two series together. Well, one title one title was just a monthly. The well, fight was scene, it? The fight scene was just a monthly. The others were every other week. It went all was encapsulated in uh, six months. Yes.
It'll sell. That's the short version of this. It will sell, and that's why they're doing it. I'm sure they'll hope that it is. I, yeah, see, I'm pretty sure they've done their research, and they're pretty confident that it's going to sell. They wouldn't go this far. They wouldn't cancel 16 books if they didn't think that this was going to sell. They might replace some of the 16 books, but, that, it, yeah, they're pretty sure. Here in a few months, let's check to see what they have to say at the Comic-Con, because you know they're going to have a panel about it. Oh, yeah. That's probably when they'll do the major announcement, because by that time, you're talking July. <sighs> and July, what what will be solicited for in July would be... October. October. Yeah, and that's and, and and that's in the in the in the story. That's when the, in the the reporting from Bleeding Cool was said it was when you know it's going to be after the September event because that would be the second anniversary. Yeah, second anniversary of the New Fifty Two. So there will be some kind of a big event, and some, and from what there were. What they've been hearing is it's going to be a villains month, so it's like, uh, instead of like say Batman twenty four, it would be like Riddler number one, and then October go back to the other numbering, that kind of thing. That's what they're that's what they're hearing. So I don't know. Uh, that's ask that it's, it's really asking a lot. For some people, um, but I guess if they're gonna, if you know, if if they they're interested, then yeah, I guess they'll plop down the two ninety nine or three ninety nine four weeks a month for the for the book, because there's some people doing that doing that twice a month for, let's say, the all new X Men. I know I am. Right, and if you're already getting, I mean, even three of the. 16 books that are going to get canceled, you're, you're thinking you might as well pick up something. Yeah. Why not just go ahead and check out this new Green Lantern thing, whatever. Why not, you know? Yeah. Most of, the, most of their customers are pretty consistent that way. Yeah. They may not spend a whole lot of money, but they do consistently spend the money. Yeah. It would be nice gesture on DC's part to cut the cost on it. <laughs> instead of, instead of they, 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 <laughs> you're doing a weekly though if you could even cut it to a dollar and a half or or two dollars that would be one nice thing that that would be something that could be marketable it depends on how many pages you're putting out if, there, if you're putting out the same number of pages there's not yes it would be a nice gesture but I think it's a pretty unlikely one yeah, right. but but I'm thinking they'll probably only do 20 pages or maybe 24 pages for this if they're doing a weekly, because they're going to be running eight-page stories more than likely. Six to eight, I would say. And if you have three or four of those in a book, then you're pretty limited to uh, your space. It won't happen. They won't lower the price. <laughs> I could be wrong. It wouldn't be the first well, time. I, I, just just think, I just think it would be a good gesture. That's all. It would be a great gesture. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. <laughs> no. You know. They've already dropped a lot of their kids' titles, too. So... I don't know what they're planning on doing there. If yeah. You think about that market. You got to bring those people in. I know. Sometimes it seems like they forget that they got to bring in new audience demographics. They don't seem to. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird, but. It seems like they're resting on their laurels quite a bit. And then everybody else in the industry is complaining that the industry is dying. Except that the people in, who are driving the industry don't really seem to be doing anything about it. 
Kind of like global warming. Everybody complains about global warming, but nobody's really interested in being the one doing something about it. Yeah, that's a case of let Joe do it. Yeah, it doesn't affect me. I'm just one guy with a driving a Hummer, you know. What can I do? You're driving a Hummer? I'm theoretical. Oh, okay. Theoretical me is driving a Hummer. <laughs> no, realistic me is driving a Corolla, getting pretty decent gas mileage. So, yeah. <laughs> and only driving eight miles each way to work. So, whatever. I think it's eight. I forget now. There's no indication as to what the titles are or what the cancellation titles are? Oh, no. Not this no. Far. Not this far out. But the the fact that they, they're they not releasing 52 titles in June tells you that they're already starting trying to cut back a little bit. Because I was wondering, because I looked at all the information and I was trying to get everything ready for the website and all that, and I'm like, this is only 50, 50 books. And no one else had mentioned anything until later on, and then and then that's when, about the time this uh, bleeding cool started posting this uh, info. I was like, hmm, maybe there's a little fire to that smoke. Do you have a feeling as to what could be canceled? Well, the inform what they were saying is, you know, don't necessarily expect it to be the lower end. Uh, the, maybe some of the mid-range books will be cut, and everybody, uh, the quote they used was, everybody will feel the pinch. So if you, th if you think about it, <sighs> Superman and, and the Batman lines have not been touched. They have not had any cancellations on their end. <clears throat> it's been pretty much the Young Justice line, the Edge, and um, the Ed well. It's been everybody else. It's been the Edge, Darks, uh, the Dark line, and the Young Justice line primarily. Some some Justice line, but what about say Grifter? Or Stormwatch, or any of the Grifters already been canceled. Okay, what about Stormwatch? Or, it well, could, they, it, it could be. I mean, it just it, it's just gone. To, you know, Jim Starlin's starting to write it, and that's the third different writer on the book. That's not a good sign. Well, I I know that. Uh, the Martian Manhunter is now in Justice League of America. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if they plan on splitting him for two titles. Green, Lan uh, Green Arrow could, could be could be canceled, yeah. I got a feeling, well, they may, I don't know, they may cancel Arrow or Green Arrow. I can see one of them going. Well, Arrow's, Arrow's different because Arrow is the, is the digital comic that they're just, they're, Turn around and put it out in print. Yeah, it's digital first, and it's a tie into the TV show, which is doing well. Because I mean, they're already talking; about, they're already they're already set up for a second season. Okay. So I don't see, I don't see them canceling that book just yet. But Arrow, I mean, Arrow, Arrow's had Green Arrow has had problems almost from the get go. It's gone through three. Four creative changes. Again, not a good sign. Yeah. I mean, Jeff Lemire just took over the book. Yeah. After, after <sighs> trying to remember all who's been on the book. Uh, and the city was the most recent one before Lemire, and then. Like Giff, I think Giffen and and Jurgens was writing it before, and then someone else was writing it before. So we're on the fourth different writer on the book in less than twenty four issues. Something like that. Yep. 
Yeah, I can see that. I can see that going. Uh, Batwing. I mean, it's undergoing a major change, and it's always been one of those that people figure was going to get canceled. Um, you know, Birds of Prey. That's a possibility. Red Red Hood. I figure Red Hood probably. And how many titles do they say that may get gone? Well, it'll be sixteen. Because if you put out four weeklies, that's four a week. You know, that's four weeks at, at four titles. That's sixteen. We're back to fifty-two. Wow. So they're still going to keep the fifty-two. It just instead of fifty-two weeklies, you're going to have quick math. That's 34, 34 monthlies, and then four books coming out four weeks a month. Right? 36. 36. Yeah, 36 and 16. I was, yeah, I, I meant to I say 36. I, well, I was meant to say 36. and You forgot to carry the two. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Take your shoes off the count. No kidding. So. But enough about that. Let's talk about Alcon. Okay. Yes, let's. Um, Says the guy who didn't go. Well, we need you. We need slightly regretting it at this point since you guys are praising it so. Oh, I tell you what. You know they've already got they've already got all four days up. You can get all four days for about thirty five dollars now. So if you you ought to go ahead and get your ticket now. That's a steal. For next year? For next year. Damn. Right now. $35 for all four days. Yeah, four days. Not three. They're starting Thursday next year for their 10th anniversary. And still running until 2 or 3 in the morning every day? Probably. Oh, frozen. There we go. That's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had moved that time. That's, that's possible. For, for like several seconds and it was just... <laughs> Anyway, um, live show. <laughs> was it twenty dollars a day this year? No. At the door? No. It was like twenty five for Friday and and Sunday, and it was like thirty five for Saturday. Yeah, it was door. major. It was major. It kind of surprised me that it was that expensive. I yeah, I didn't know until I didn't know those numbers until pretty close to the end. Yeah, but you're you're buying an 18 hour day here too. I mean, you, you don't get that at any of the other shows. Yeah, it start it starts at nine and go. You know, Saturday was literally there was things going on from nine till two, nine in the morning till two in the morning. Starting that's from at nine and two in the, in, yeah. yeah yeah officially starting at nine, officially ending at two. It doesn't mean that stuff wasn't going on after two. Right. Because a lot of people were, I mean, this was at at the uh, Crown Plaza, so I mean, things were going on at hotel rooms, more fun and games and that kind of stuff. Woo woo! Not necessarily that, but <laughs> not necessarily not that either. True. Anyway, uh, it was my first. This this was my first time to go, um, and quite honestly, wish it hadn't. I wish it had been. Uh, this was year nine. I wish it was my ninth time to go. Uh, I just had a total blast. Uh, it's a total different vibe from any con I've ever been to. Uh, James Pickering talked about there was more of a college uh, party atmosphere, and it uh, yeah, it is. You know. Um. Yeah, people at like people at some of the bigger shows are just are always so serious. They're just sort of marching around, running, 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 doing their stuff, and, and trying to rush through and get all this stuff done in the seven-hour window they have. Yeah, it's kind of reassuring to hear that there's a con out there that's not like that. It's a little more fun and laid back. Well, I mean, I have fun at the big shows too, but this is a this is a just it's it's a total different vibe. So it was very refreshing. Uh. Wes and I went to several of the of the 
uh, panels and, and a couple of game shows that were put on by our friend uh, Cole Houston, who uh, runs the website Jedi Cole and several other websites, and, and uh, he's on a couple of podcasts as well. Um, it just uh, it was fun. I just, it was it was it was a, it was a nice change. Uh, go ahead, you say something less, because I don't want to take up all the time talking about talking about it. It was something extremely different for comic book convention goers. Uh, it did not lean toward comic books. It was all con. It was, it was open to most everything out there, and some of it amazed me as to what they were trying to pull off. Uh, they had rooms in the hotel going with panels constantly. They had gaming going on. They had a hospitality room or two. Uh, they had panels in both the... Uh, the, the uh, discussion rooms and in the large auditorium, the ballroom there, uh, you had everything up from discussing ignorance of fans at conventions to roller derby uh, explanations and uh, exhibitions. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the dealer room was entirely different from what you see at a a Dallas convention a comic book convention I think we saw two tables that had comic books and between the two of them I bet there weren't more than 60 comics available uh, that, uh, well there was one that had more um, and believe it or not it was the half price books table <laughs> Because they had yeah. two, they had they had two or three. They they had the the packages of fifty for like twenty bucks, and then and then they had some loose ones. But those didn't show up till those Sunday. didn't show up till Sunday. Yeah. Because I went over there and went through some of the loose ones and was like, okay, well, how much for that? And I I don't know. I grabbed about a dozen or so, and she you know, the girl that was waiting on me go. A dollar fifteen. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> to well, me, that was that was one of the smartest moves by Half Price Books, and this was the Half Price out of Rockwall. That, oh, was it? Yes, that ran that table, and I thought that was very smart on their part. I'm not just talking about the comics. I'm talking about having a table there. Just having a, okay. just having an appearance. Yeah. Oh sure. Because they carried books, they carried DVDs, they carried uh, CDs, they carried comics, they carried toys. They had a lot of stuff there, and it was all worth looking at. They had, what, at least three tables, maybe four? They had four tables. They had four tables because they, they were at the end cap, and they had there was, there was two at the end, and then there was two on the side, right? Yeah. Okay, so they had four. I knew they had at least three. I wasn't sure if it was four, but yeah, it was four. Yeah, they had four there. They they used their space wisely, and they brought the, the stuff that was bought. I spent the majority of my money that weekend at their table. Yep. Uh, they had it was so diverse. You had your your t-shirt places. You another place was uh, a store in, out of. Farmer's Branch, the game, gaming uh, stall. Oh, roll, roll, roll to play, yeah. That was uh, interesting because I had not seen anybody really do that before, but she was pretty diverse on the types of games she had. Yep. Uh, you, you had, of course, the clothing people. You had uh, people with hats. You had people with dresses. You had people with uh, outfits. It was... Very different. Did it strike you as funny as as, as uh, for for a convention that had a weapons policy to have a lot of dealers that had like different types of weapons there? Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, it was. It, I mean, it was. It, huh? That's why they have a weapons policy. Is well, they're selling them. 
Well, <laughs> seriously, that's why they do it. Because yeah. they want to, they got to cover themselves, and they know that stuff's going to be there, so you have to be careful with it. Yeah. Um. There was the there was the steampunk role playing game table. They had the had a box that was like a supernatural fighters kit. I took pictures of it. If if you follow us on Facebook, uh, you probably looked at them. I, put, I took a couple of them. Wish we had gone back and and I taken a picture of the Logan's Run kit because there was a guy there. Um. I'm not sure all what they were selling, but the, one of the things they were selling was it was it was a case, a carrying case, but in the in the case was a replica of of the Sandman's blaster, and it came it, and it's, it was made originally from I mean they from the original prop that, from the movie. Because you remember that list that they talked yeah. to, he talked talk about he talked it, you know it was it, so I mean it's one hundred percent accurate from the from the from the prop. Uh, it also came with a little onk, and it came with all the different uh, the jewels, the, the palm. jewels, the, the palm jewels, all the different colors, and all that for one hundred and fifty dollars. I'm like that's real cool, but. I don't know if I can spend one hundred fifteen dollars on that, <laughs> but yeah, I was the dealer's room was well, yeah. If you if you're a comic book person and you go to this, you're going to be upset, but about the dealer's room. But I wasn't because I mean it was so it was so cool to see all the stuff that we would never have seen at a more traditional comic book convention. So it was cool. It was nice. Um, we got we got to take a couple of minutes to talk about all the costumes we saw. Uh, a different variety of a, a wide variety of costumes. Uh, not just not just I mean there were some of the traditional and of course it was heavily Doctor Doctor Who oriented since uh, Sylvester Muscoy was originally scheduled to be there. Doctor Who's really hot right now too. True. Um, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, just, I was really impressed with the with with some of the costumes we saw. Uh, we even, there was even one guy who was uh, dressed as uh, Johnny Depp at the, at the end of Once Upon a Time in Mexico. You know, he's got the sunglasses on, and of course he's got the eye, you know bleeding out of his eyes because his eyes are, you know. His eyes are gone, so he's blind, so he's walking around. And I asked, this was after you had left Les Saturday afternoon. James and I saw him, and I said, can I take your picture? And he goes, what? Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, extra points for actually being in character. Great. <laughs> yeah, they had uh, a lot of different costumes, everything from steampunk to animal uh, to some very outlandish things that I, I didn't understand. Uh, there was one gal there dressed as a fairy princess that played the pan pipes. And she was really good at it. She, they had a uh, microphone set up for her so she could play and there was a small tip jar attached to the stand, but she that, she was good. That was from one. That's from one of the video games. I don't remember which one it is right now. I think it's like Legend of Zelda or something like that. I, I I'm not sure. I'm I'm sure I'm going to get slammed for not knowing, but I don't really follow all uh, video games all that much. So I'm sure someone watching this going, it's this person. And I'm like, oh, sorry. Yeah. Tweet yeah. us let us know. Um, and of course, our friend Taffeta Darling was there all three days, and she was in costume all three days. Yeah. Friday, she was member. Yeah, she was a member of the Rockford Peaches. Rockford Peaches. 
Yeah. And then Saturday she was Seymour and she had a little she had Audrey too with her. Mm-hmm. And then Sunday she was um what was her name? But it's from Lisa. Weird Science. Lisa from Weird Science. As the gym instructor. Yep. Dressed as the gym instructor. Yep. Complete with Shermer High School t shirt. Yep. So the, the, um, go the ahead. panels were the panels were fun. We got to sit in on uh, Tim Taylor uh, from the Hunger Games, and the main thing was I wanted to find out what was coming up because I'd heard a snippet of what he had done for the Sci-Fi Channel, and I had to find out what this was. And this man is very funny. He is yeah. a professional comedian to start. Yeah, I heard that. And uh, when he told us that he was doing that, he did a movie for them called Ghost Shark. I was intrigued. So he, uh, he said it should be coming out around in June, June or, June or July. He said. Yep. So I think this will be one to to uh, look at. It, yep. It's, it's going to be a Sci-Fi Channel movie, but. I think this will flow. The, I think this will work. The, no I think the, this one, the, uh, this one, I have a little bit more high hopes for, uh, Mike, because the whole premise is a shark appears from any body of water, any body of water. Like that, big, that big insulated cup that Les just lifted. The shark could come up out of that. And, he mentioned. He right mentioned. He mentioned bathtubs. He said toilets, swimming pools, anything. Sweet. So yeah. <laughs> be entertaining. And he play. He's not playing a sheriff. He's playing. Is he playing? He's playing the deputy, he's, right? He's playing a deputy. Yeah. And he said that this is the kind of role he likes. He doesn't want to be the star. He doesn't want to be the main guy. He wants to be the best friend of the star. Yep. And it sounds like they had a blast on it. And it also stars uh, uh, Richard Mall from uh, from uh, Night Court fame. Bull, the bailiff bull. Yeah, who was who was, why am I, what was the other thing he, he did? That he was, uh, well, more recently he was in scary movie. Was it two? He was he was the he was the ghost, the main ghost. Oh right right right. He also played a villain in one of the movies he did, and yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking. I can't remember which movie. Okay. It was, it was one of those sword and sorcery type. It was like He Man or something like that. That that bane of film. Yeah. Uh, we also got to see uh, one of the game show or one of the, yeah one of the games there about Disney trivia, which was fun. S sadistic Disney trivia. And it was sadistic. I mean, the, some of the questions they some of them out, you're just like, oh my god, that is, you know, how in the heck would you know that unless you actually start trying to find that kind of information? Yeah, it was <laughs> extremely obscure. Yeah, but but it was well done. And it, what was fun was the three players had their chance, and if they didn't get it, then they opened it to the crowd, not for any points or prizes, but just to say who it was. Yeah. And that was interesting because some of them were were so bizarre. And it was it was all aspects of Disney. I mean, from live action to the movies to uh, to the animated films to Muppets, the Pixar, to even Marvel. There was even a section for Marvel. Yeah. I mean, it was everything. So they covered the gambit. Yeah, that was fun. Um... I'll go ahead and do a little pub in two. Uh, unfortunately, you guys were not there, but I was a part of the podcasting summit that took place Saturday evening. Uh, that was run. It was moderated by Rick Gutierrez from uh, the United States of Geekdom. That's the name of the website, and they do uh, they do podcasts. He does at least three. I'm thinking there's four different podcasts, and I'm like, oh my god, God. How can you keep all that stuff? He's a podcast <laughs> network all by himself. There you go. Um, uh, it was a blast. It was a it was a two hour 
just uh, you know, how'd you get into this? Um, you, you know, what you know, what what you know, kind of how did you get into podcasting? You know, what what did, what kind of experiences have you had and that kind of stuff? What Would you want to stop and? Yeah, well, that's pretty much what I was thinking the entire time. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm listening to everybody else, and I'm like, they're having a blast, and I'm like, I'm having a blast, but I don't really have all of that kind of funny stories yet, you know. <laughs> um, I did get, I, huh? Got to start somewhere. Yeah, I uh, did give no, a shout out. Come. Yeah, did give a shout out, shout out to our friend for Kayla, and of course that got everybody else talking about her for a few minutes, and. Uh, yeah, I got a text from her saying after she watched it and saying thank you for all the kind words and all that. And I said, like, how can you not? Yeah, yeah, how can you not say anything? You know, she's such a sweetheart. Because um, one of the questions was her favorite, her favorite guests. And I said, you know, we had her on twice. You know, and some of the other ones we're talking about, they had like five set questions and and then that was it you know that was it and I was like I had uh, one we let I her said, take over <laughs> well, I was I was like I was like with her we have one what's been going on and then two hours later we're like we need to shut oh, this down God, now <laughs> <laughs> so I had a blast uh everybody had a blast uh Rick says that we'll do it again next year uh and that I've, I haven't officially been un- invited, but he pretty much said, "Yeah, everybody come back and let's do this again next year." It's a blast. So. Good. We will. Um, I had so much of a blast that I want to try to do some. I want to try to do some panels for next year. Uh, I don't want to go into any of them right now because I don't want to give anybody any ideas. I know James had one. That I thought was a great idea that should be covered. Um, so we'll try to see if we can get them all together and and submit them for for next year, especially since there's going to be an extra day. Um, and you and you never know who's going to you know. Less you talked about there was being some there was being some holes in the schedule, but you got to remember we had about three or four people celebrities can, canceled, and I know. Uh, yeah. Peter Mayhew had uh, there was two or three times on the schedule of him had some kind of surprise film showing or some some such like that where it was just like a thirty minute or an hour thing in one of the rooms. So obviously, if he wasn't here, that didn't happen. So um, all in all, it was a blast. Um, I think one of the things I most enjoyed was the uh, Doctor Horrible sing along. Uh, they they did a showing of it, and at first they they said, "Okay, we're going to turn on the the uh, uh, the encapsulation or the, the dialogue down there at the bottom of the screen." Yeah, the close captioning. Yeah, thank you, close captioning. And they turned it on to Wiccan, and they started showing the film with Wiccan uh, subtitles. Subtitles, and you're going. What the frell is going on here? And then they, then they said, "Okay, okay, well, we were just fooling," and they flipped it over to English. So I had only seen a small snippet of it. I didn't know exactly what was going on, but I sat there and I was able to follow the movie, and it became it. It was like watching uh, Rocky Horror at a theater. Everybody had snide comments tossing at the screen the whole time. Oh yeah, Doctor so, Marvel is a big cult hit. It is, and, it's and they made funny. they made the announcement there that there was plans for the uh, next uh, portion of the film to come out soon. They're going to start filming it here very shortly. Nice. Uh, and I don't know, uh, Thomas. You said that you haven't seen it, but Mike, have, have you seen this before? Oh yeah. It is very funny. Oh, yeah. It's great it stuff. is a very funny thing, and to sit there and, and watch the closed captioning on it was even funnier. Because uh, it, it just, you know, I could watch that and come up with stuff in my own head. 
who to thunk it to to make comments. And it uh, the people there were very quick witted about it. Of course, they've seen it eighty more times than me, so they've probably got stuff ready for it. Yeah, but it was interesting to watch. Uh, they had, of course, they had the final panel with all the major celebrities there. The farewell, which I think is a cool thing. Yes. The where where you get suppose I I, I suppose all the all the celebrities were invited to come do one final one final panel and, and give a chance for everybody to basically say thank you for for coming here and you know hope you had a great time and hopefully you come back next time or that, or that kind of thing. I think that's a cool thing to do. I think it is too. Very impressed. The only problem I had was the stench of the last room for the uh, for the uh, for the super for the superhero cont- uh, costume contest. Yes, it was the very last. It was was the very last thing. It was the very last program of of the con. Yeah, it was in the same room where they had some kind of dancing contest going on. I know there was dancing going on Saturday, and God knows what else has gone on in that room. So, yeah. I think that was one of the anime rooms they had. The con funk had hit it pretty hard. The con, oh. fu- the con funk was there. Oh, you talk, you talk about the anime thing. I've already looked at for next year, and they're doing, they're doing like a twenty-four hour uh, anime karaoke thing. Wow. I think it starts like Thursday and ends Friday, or it's, or, or no, it starts Friday and ends Saturday, or some such. Nice. Like you go, go go to the go to the website and check it out. They already got they've already got a, a, a schedule up, and some of the stuff's already been posted, and, and that's one of them. It's like a twenty four hour thing. Wow. Cool. So, I'm definitely so my- going back next year. Mike, we'd like for you to set aside some time for it because it was fun. It was well worth the time, and I' sorry that I did not get to see Thomas up on stage, where I could toss barbs at him. But uh, half the fun of doing it would be to heckle him up there. Eh? Yeah, see if they try to throw us out. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure he did well, and obviously he enjoyed it. So uh, yes, I intend on going back next year myself. I will do everything in my power to get up there. Sounds Good. Like it's too much fun to miss. Yeah, it was it was a blast. And and the thing the thing the funny thing was, you know, yeah, I've got you know the, the, gone to the other cons and have been have been there for hours and then come home and I'm just drained, hurting, back, you know, more on feet than anything else. These three days, we were there a ton of a lot of the time. I mean, we weren't there obviously from opening to closing, but we were there all, for long periods of time. I come home and I'm not. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel. I didn't feel drained or anything. I was just. I kind of felt. You know, I was still kind of. Huh? It's the atmosphere that's in some of those bigger cons. It's just. It just sucks the light out of you. I mean, the, there's just the energy is just totally negative it's really weird it, i mean it's one of the reasons that i was i kind of was sh- blowing off all con was because oh it's I, I realized it was kind of a bigger deal and i'm like oh those are always such a drag i mean i, I definitely i'm i'm loving the fact that it was more like one of the smaller cons where the energy's high and people are excited and having fun and doing their thing and everybody's embracing all of that stuff that 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 sounds awesome to me what I like to hear. It was well worth it. It was it was a blast. It was. So we will be there next year. I guess that's something like wood. There. Knock on the wood like substance. Mm hmm. I did. Okay. To wrap things up for tonight, um, uh, let's let's talk real quickly about the uh, anniversary. Yeah, that's what I was about to do. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were shutting down, so I'm 
Well, I was going to try to so try to shut things down, but I was going to do that too. Okay. Um, this Sunday, the twenty fourth, marks our third anniversary. Uh, as near as we can tell, we we started up uh, officially, I guess, uh, March twenty fourth, two thousand ten. Mm-hmm. Um, for those who don't know, we basically were just a bunch of guys hanging out at, at the comic book store on Wednesday nights, talking comics, and it, it came about someone was saying, well, let's try to record our conversations at podcasts, and of course, next thing you know, we're doing, Les and I were doing stuff on uh, Ustream, and I know Mike was there in the in the chat room listening and, and 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 giving us grief and that kind of stuff. So we've kind of kind of gone it's it's been a fun three years. It's kinda of hard it's hard to believe it's been three years, but in some aspects it seems like it's been three years. Um what well guys what do you what do you have to say Les? You've been you've been there from day one. It's been fun for me too. I've enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, there are times that you, you kind of wonder if uh, if if it's meaningful to us, and it turns around that it is. And as I see it, if it's meaningful to us, then somebody's going to latch on to it. Yeah. Uh, it's been a fun three years for me. I think that you and I started off with some discussions that were pretty poignant and we were able to carry that through the three years and then with the additions that's not where I thought he was going with that <laughs> <laughs> well I was going to praise Mike for showing up but now uh, I'm not so sure yeah, not so much. no but, but with the addition of Mike and with uh, James too I think it's helped us considerably uh, because from the start when we started Thomas and I were sitting across from each other and giving blank stares when we had nothing else to say but now we've got somebody that can step in uh, but I think we've done a lot of good stuff we've had some very good uh, celebrities on and yep. that's always been good. You guys did uh, the one recently I was not part of, but and I wish I had been. But uh, you had mentioned Perkela, and of course, then we had the interview with Steve Niles, which yep. was fun. Yep. Which was awesome. And uh, I think isn't his his uh, latest series going to be? Finishing up here within the month or so. It, sh- it should be ending up here real soon. Yep. So, I think I I've, I've had fun and I appreciate you guys. Uh, you've helped me con- uh, considerably all the way. Thanks, Mikey. I didn't do it. Okay, that's that's that that's all you're gonna have to say. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Gosh, you shades know, of. It. You know, I, I'm I'm here. See, Les claims to be here for the beer. I'm I'm here for the opportunity to kind of throw in the smartest comments every now and then. Um, I, I will definitely say I have thoroughly enjoyed um, getting to read way more comics than I ever would have in my life ever. Through this, and the discussions have been fun. Um, but I'm not really the speechy type, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, yeah, let's, this is, I mean, this is fun. Let's keep it going. There you go. I mean, the, the, Les made a, cra- a comment. I don't know if it was a snide comment or not about an audience. But, um, I, I mean, part of me, I don't, I, I, and, and I, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, if we get an audience, great. When we get an audience, great. I don't. That's not what I'm doing it for. I don't need the audience. I'm. I'm. I'm a horrendous introvert. I don't care. Um, I'm gonna make some smart comments either way. So it's all good. We're having fun. That's all that matters. Yeah. Good enough for me. Um. Yeah. 
it's it's been a crazy three years. Uh, I have, as I as I mentioned on the the podcast summit, which Les, you sh- you should you should go uh, watch. It's it's it was very interesting. This was a lot of fun. I've learned so much in the last three years. Not just not just kind of diversing myself on on more comics than I probably would have as just a reader, but you know. Putting putting this show together, learning how to do a broadcast, learning how to put together a website, how to post stuff. Um, based, you know, I I'm a member of media. Well, less than I remember. Well, and my is too is part is part of media now. Uh, that's something I would have never have thought of that we would be three plus years ago. It's uh, it's been fun. There's been a lot of headaches. There's been a lot of stress. There's been times where I've really wanted to just sit here and, and just wonder why the hell I'm doing this. And then something will come along. Most recently is is the Alcon experience, and I'm like, this is why I'm doing this. This to uh, to have fun. Not to saying that the, the doing the shows, you know, be talking to you guys. It's, it's not an enjoy, enjoyable experience. We would have been doing this anyway. We would have been talking and, and, and having fun and, and that kind of stuff anyway. Uh, but doing this and, 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 and as a show and all that, you know, I'm having a blast. Uh, uh, gang, stick with us. We're about to go through, the show is about to go through a major change here real soon. Oh, spoiler. Spoiler alert! Um, not that we're not having fun now, but we're we're hoping to add a little bit more structure and and definitely increase. The, hopefully, we're increasing the fun. Uh, but maybe to add a little bit more structure. Uh, you know, we've got we've got some th- we've got some things planned. Uh, I know Les knows because he was included on on the email, My, but Mike doesn't know that we're going to be doing. Uh, we've we've basically got we've, we're going to have an appearance at one of the stores for Free Comic Book Day. We'll go into more detail here as we get closer, uh, and it will be with Perkela. So that's going to be a blast. Um, oh, cool! You're leaving me off of emails now. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> you who would read the emails? No, he includes oh, yeah, me. Right? Yeah, no kidding. I'm the guy. I check my email. Hell. Uh huh. <laughs> well, and then I've got I've got something else that not even Les knows, so I'll I'll go into that a little bit after after we're through with and, the show. And, but and I just got a a, a glimpse of Les's T-shirt and its price. Oh, oh. Uh, let me let me see. I didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember I remember that shirt. Or I remember seeing that shirt. So. Um. So thank you, everybody. Whether you've been with us from day one or just finding this today. If you're listening, we do, to this 150 years from now. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Keep them uh, flying. As always, we appreciate any kind of feedback. Uh, email at the fellowship of the geek dot get fellowship of the geeks dot net. Any kind of feedback would be appreciated. You know, we're on Facebook. Just feeding hey. would be fine. Feed us. That would be great. Yeah. We love donuts. I don't really <laughs> want a donut now. Well, less like salad. So <laughs> donuts for Mike and me and salad for less. Maybe a donut salad. There, there we go. go. With uh, extra glaze. F- Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash the Fellowship of the Geeks. We're on Twitter. At uh, at Fellowship Geeks, and in Google Plus, yeah, you probably just need to do a search because oh, it's a long ass number. We have a link on the website. Just yeah, but we have the links on on the main website, uh, so there and it's on every page. So follow us there. Um, follow James too, even though he's not here. And of course, James uh, www.agalaxycalldallas.com. Trying to say that fast. Believe me, I've been doing that a lot recently, and you need to practice more. <laughs> yeah, doing it about fifty times in a row, you know, 
You gotta take I breaks. gotta do it more. You gotta take so. breaks. Yeah. He is at Galaxy underscore Dallas, I believe, on Twitter. Yep. I think he's also on Facebook. He is on Facebook. Uh, I believe it's a galaxy called Dallas. Uh, as as all as all one word. Yeah, um. So, James, we missed you. We 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 were hoping you would join us, but we we understand, and hopefully you will be with us next time. So. Uh, so let's go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for tonight. We'll be be back. Two weeks from today, which would be April second, yeah, April second, and we will be announcing our winner of uh, the winners of Comic Crazy 2013. Our whoever you know, our winner from the from the pulp hero side, and then the winner of of the uh, competition side. Um, it's very close. I'll, I'll say that much. Uh, I mean the. The difference between first and second place is one. So I uh, appreciate everybody who has been playing. I um, uh, hope you've been having fun. It's been very interesting trying, you know, seeing everything that I've been seeing re regarding reasons and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and. Uh, what else? I, I think that's about pretty much it. So, with that, we will go ahead and call it a night. And I hope y'all guys have a good couple weeks. And we'll talk to y'all later. Good night. Bye. Good night.